morning, Lieutenant Galloway with the Eufaula Fire and Rescue. Uh, this is the weekly reports, April 28th through March the 1st. Uh, at this date, we've had a total of 13 calls. We've had nine emergency medical service calls. We've had one gasoline or flammable liquid spill. This was on uh, 4-30, uh, 2014, and this was 1116 North Eufaula Avenue. It was referenced into when they arrived on scene, an employee had already cleaned up about a gallon's worth of spill uh, using some of their on-site uh, spill uh, equipment they have. Uh, and uh, after investigation, there was a small hole in the hose at the gas pumps. Uh, this pump system was shut down and uh, scheduled for repair. Uh, everything was mitigated and taken care of, and as uh, far as I know, all units returned back in service, no problems. Uh, the next one was a smoke detector installation. This was on the 29th at uh, 706 Inlet Road. Uh, and the thing is, we want to try and get everyone to please call us. Uh, at 687-1218 and uh, if you're interested in smoke detector installations we still do free smoke insta uh, installate detector installations for homes that do not have them uh, so if you will give us a call there at 687-1218 we'll be glad to give you some information on it and schedule a time to come out and actually install one also, we've had two false alarms. Uh, the first one was on the 28th at 1394 North Eufaula Avenue. Uh, when they arrived on scene there, uh, they found no smoke and no fire. All units was able to return to service quickly. Uh, the second call was on the 30th at 395 Lake Drive. Uh, this was at a facility that once arriving on scene, we found out that they were conducting a test of their alarm system, but they did not notify any of the public safety agencies such as dispatch, police or the fire department. So we encourage everyone that if you do have a facility or an alarm system and you are going to be doing a test or you have someone who maintains it coming in to do a test, please notify us and let us know because we, when responding to these alarms, there's law enforcement vehicles as well as fire department and rescue vehicles that are moving up the road and around through town very swiftly. Uh, and through traffic, so if we don't have to uh, respond to that, if we know it's an, an, a false call and that it's just a test, then that alleviates and creates a lot more safety for everyone else in town and alleviates some of that problem with us uh, getting out in the public and, and having to get into the traffic in that situation. So uh, just please notify us uh, at that same number, 687-1218, when you're doing that, or our local dispatch center here with the police department. So. Other than that, that's it for the fire department today. Just hope everybody has a good weekend and can dry out and enjoy the sun that's forecasted to be coming because uh, we were lucky we did not have any calls in reference to the weather. Uh, everyone pretty much heeded the, the warnings and stayed at home and did their uh, severe weather planning. Uh, and we appreciate everyone for that. And uh, like I say, we hope that everybody has a good weekend and enjoy what they got coming up with the, the sunny weather. Good morning, I'm Larry Hubbard with Fall Police Department and I'll be doing the crime report for the period of April 28th through May 1st, 2014. During this reporting period, we had a total of 16 arrests, 9 traffic and 7 misdemeanor or felony and investigated 3 accidents. On the traffic arrest, 2 were for speeding, 2 for no driver's license, 2 for improper tag and 3 for no proof of insurance. On our offense reports, we had an indecent exposure uh, reported on Sunset Drive. Uh, theft of property on Gregory Drive, a uh, steel chainsaw was taken. Uh, theft of property on South Eufaula, uh, Garmin GPS and some clothing was taken, recovered. Uh, an information report, uh, we had a counterfeit $20 bill that was circulated, uh, discovered I think it was at Walmart. Had a domestic violence, third degree. Had an animal at large, dangerous, dangerous dog, East Union and Livingston Street. Had a domestic violence, third, uh, Old Abbeville. Had giving false information to law enforcement, to State Dr. Road. Uh, reckless endangerment and domestic violence on South Fall Avenue. Domestic violence on Holly Drive. 
and information damage to property. We had uh, juvenile reports. We had a harassment on area of Elm Place. We had a juvenile information and just a truancy call. Not going to school. And on our arrest, we had uh, Taiwan Hicks arrested for domestic violence third. Demetrius Conway was arrested, assault first degree. And that's that Buddy Lawrence case. We had um, Iwana McElroy arrested, criminal trespass. Candy Bradfield arrested, giving false information to law enforcement. Candy Bradfield arrested, possession of drug paraphernalia and hindering prosecution. And we had James Bonner arrested for domestic violence, third degree. That's it for this week. I've got a couple questions for you. Okay. Uh, Ed Trainer, if you follow the Tribune, uh, wondering about the um, indecent exposure, is that a pants down situation or? That was, that was, um, we call it flasher type. Uh, hmm. So someone looks like, was it a female flashing or a male, male flashing? A male, male flashing mm -hmm. and a female filed a complaint? A female victim. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And so, <clears throat> was, that an, was that worse than what we normally see in terms of uh, pants being hanging? Uh, it was, low? yes. This was an intentional, intentional act. So, uh, and regarding the. Um, Demetrius uh, Conway, um, assault first degree, and this was the, the uh, event with uh, Buddy Lawrence. Yes, sir. Um, do you have a mug shot of him that we can get with? We'd like to print that in the paper. I think Captain Watkins uh, emailed or texted Miss Tiffany this morning. Okay, great. Yeah. So, uh, so he's got a statement on that or something of that nature? Or? I'm not sure, but we can get it for you. Whatever you need, we'll get yeah. it for you. Oh. We just want to follow up, let folks know he's been charged in that assault first degree. That's a uh, class B felony. Class B. Mm -hmm. And uh, what kind of range of uh, penalty do you face for something like that? I'm, I'm not that sure. Issue? That uh, it's a little bit out of our realm. It depends on his uh, prior histories and stuff mm -hmm. like that. It's the Shows state has a certain. Thing. We don't we don't get involved in that, so I, I can't answer. Yeah. The DA's office could answer that. Uh, but he could do prison time? Oh, absolutely. Uh, do we know uh, any, any reason or any indication of why that occurred? I, I don't. I, no. I do not. No report taken that says uh, that, uh, how, that, you know, how that event came about? Because this time all we know is that the guy's in the hospital and the man was... The guy, the man's way arrested. we understand it, and... Um, the guy was trespassing and told to leave and decided to beat Mr. Buddy up. Trespassing on property over on TV. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, um, you got to remember now, Mr. Buddy was uh, injured pretty bad and doesn't have, last I uh, was aware of, full recollection of exactly what happened. And we don't have witnesses as to motive, we have witnesses as to what happened. But as to motive, we, we don't, okay? Um, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I don't know how to uh, say that properly, but... but... Your understanding is that is that uh, the property owner asked the guy to leave his property and the uh, meet down ensued? That's our understanding, yes, sir. Uh, could have been more to it than that? Absolutely. But we, we just don't know at this point. May never know yeah. as to why. We do know it did, but that's why a lot of times we don't ever know. When, when would we expect that to go to trial? Well, the next grand jury is in what, mm -hmm. four or five months, so. So it, takes, it won't get charged until four or five months, or he'll spend that time in jail, or what? He will spend that time in jail until he can make bond. And what's his bond set at? The DA's office can probably answer that, or the sheriff's department may can answer it. We don't set the bond, um, so I don't, I don't know. Because he's in county jail. Then. If he's not, he will be today. He's been held here. Right. As soon as we, we get him in and, and uh, the judge has a 72-hour hearing, we ship him to Clayton. 
to the county jail. Any felony goes to the county jail. We try not to hold them very long.